right, here we go, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, realtor here in Ottawa, and uh, this show is all about businesses around the city, and we're bringing awareness to this lovely city that we have called Ottawa. Wanted to make sure that everybody knows that it's not a boring city, and today I am actually delighted. I feel a little bit of a sugar rush, and I'll explain to you in a second why I feel a little sugar rush, because I have one of my really good friends here, Day. How are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Doing fantastic. So Day, actually one of the owners for Chocolate February here in Canada, uh, one of my favorite stores in Canada, by the way, now, of late, uh, probably have been at the store in the last couple of weeks, I don't know, maybe six or seven times. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most amazing businesses I've seen in the city. And I wanted to bring him on the show today just to give him a little bit of a voice to let the, the city know a little bit more about Chocolate February. What I wanted to do, I wanted to start off with the journey for you guys. You've taken over this business, you know, so you said roughly about eight months or so. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about why you got into this business. First of all, the reason why I got into this business was they are doing the business for a purpose. Mm -hmm. They are not just like doing it for the sake of doing it. They are in a business of selling happiness. And uh, to be honest, my first experience was when I went to Montreal and I went to Chocolat Fevry for the first time. Like my inner child came out and I felt like I was in a Disneyland of chocolates. Exactly, yeah. Even though I have never visited Disneyland, but I definitely can, you know, vouch for it that it's going to be like that. And I was mesmerized. And for me, like, I'm, I'm one of those people that don't really eat a lot of sweets. And honestly, like, it's uh, for me to have something like a snack or something like that, it's, it's always, like, I have to save it for the weekend or, you know, just because of my workout regime and all of that. But when I got into the store, I felt like literally a kid at a candy store. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the history of Chocolate Fivory. What do you, you know, what you felt why did you feel like, you know, this is a business for you? So, first of all, it was a family business and uh, it was originated in Nike Big City. And uh, the most important thing was a small family had a big dream. And the big dream was to, you know, uh, you know, provide happiness to the family in terms of chocolate because everybody loves chocolate. And then, you know, when I uh, went through their uh, products, it touched my heart. Yeah. And to be honest, if something touches my heart, I'm going there. And this was the one of the biggest reasons that the quality of the product speaks itself. No matter what, wherever Chocolat Fevri is, if a person tries it once, they are going to become the brand advocate forever. Yeah. And I happen to be the brand advocate first because I was a user, I was a consumer, and then I became like the guy who was doing the same which Chocolat Fevri was doing before, right? Yeah. And for you, because obviously, like you came in from a background before you said you used to be in banking or what have you. Tell me a little bit more about why do you think that actually brought you or made you the business person you are today? To be honest, it, uh, it starts from way back when I was in India. I was at uh, the age of 21. I opened up my own business of leather exports. It gave me a very good exposure that how the real world is. Mm -hmm. I was very naive. I was very gullible. And then I learned from my mistakes. I did a lot of mistakes before, you know, in the business. Then uh, I came here to uh, Canada in 2017. I studied international business management, brand management, took the knowledge and worked. My first job was at Food Basics, which I am really proud of because those eight months in the cold freezer room mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. First of all, I would say it made me, you know, comfortable that... Canada is not going to be that cold because I was already in the freezer. <laughs> You're in the freezer already. So getting it colder than this. So I would say Food Basics was preparing me for the real world. The credit goes to the first job, which is the Food Basics. And then I moved slowly, slowly. Like I already had a roadmap. I won't lie to you that everything was planned. Like whatever jobs I did, there was always a plan. Like after Food Basics, my first sales job was Kelvin Klein in Tanger Outlets, which was really good. And then I moved to People Jewelers as a part-time, then slowly, 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 I realized that I'm good in sales and I'm good with people. I feel, you know, the most important talent anybody can have to be a good salesperson, to understand the need of the customer. Then eventually I became the manager at few retail stores. I moved to banking because I needed to know, you know, like how the real banking system works in Canada. Yeah. And uh, then when I realized that, okay, this is the right time, I got the brand where I resonate with the brand, the brand cares about the people, the brand cares about the quality, they are doing it with purpose. I felt like, you know, it's time to, you know, join Chocolate Fevery. Amazing. And one thing that you just mentioned that I would love to kind of maybe unpack this a little bit more, sales. Mm -hmm. you, you can't be in business unless you know a little bit about sales. Yes. Tell me a little bit more why you think that's 
the case. See, you know, like people think that sales is like selling a commodity for once, twice, mm -hmm. maybe. Like, I feel like sales is to build up a connection. Sales can be of like any commodity, any business, you need to build up a connection. You need to build up a connection in such a way that they are coming like all the time. They know that there is a person over there who cares about us. They know that there is a person who is going to not just push the sales, he's going to like help in terms of fulfilling the need. And I feel like any business needs to, you know, do that. Mm -hmm. And we, are, we, do, we do the same at Shokla Favori. Irrespective of whatever person comes in, we show them, showcase what we have. And uh, we know that if that customer is not buying right now, he might not need it right yeah, now. Yeah, it's really all about the experience. And one of the things that I've enjoyed at the store is that experience. The second I walked in, until I left, I felt like I'm, you know, I'm valuable. Yeah. I'm supposed to be there. This is the place where I'm supposed to be. And I, you know, I'm trying on things and I'm asking for things. And like you guys were, the customer service was just unreal. And I think in any sort of business, if you don't have the sales and the customer service sort of combined, I don't think it's going to succeed. 100%. So when you guys decided to take on the shop here about eight months ago or so, what? What sort of idea did you have in mind? Why did you decide that this particular location was the, the place for you? To be honest, like Kanata is like very close to my heart because my Kevin Klein job was in Kanata, Tanger. Mm -hmm. I love the vibe of the you know place. I love the my clients. My demographics and psychographics are really amazing. They're very supportive, which is very much needed for any you know business person when the clients care about you. Yeah. So now it's, I, I always say to myself and to my team that they already care about us. So now it's our time to reciprocate it. And it becomes easy, you know, business, if you understand the need of your customers, as I have repeated, and I will be repeating this again and again, because this is the most important thing which I believe in, you know, things become simple. And to be honest, we just won the top choice award. So they already, you know, are appreciating us within seven, eight months. And in Chocolate February's history, this is the first top choice award. Oh, wow. And in Kanata. So I think, you know, like we are setting up the right, you know, benchmarks and the company is recognizing that because they fully support us. And Amazing. And the beginning. The, for the audience that are listening, what is the top choice award and how do you win it? So the top choice award is basically depending upon, you know, how your customer services, first of all, the products all obviously speaks itself. And plus, you know, the people vote. You know, and literally, I was thinking, okay, you know, like, uh, how does it work? But few days before, a customer literally came, and she said that that herself and her whole family voted for us. And then I realized that okay, it's very important because it's the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. And when people are you know voting for us, taking out important time from their life, I feel like you know they are our family. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's kind of like so. If if I'm not mistaken, it's kind of like a Google review in a way. But this is more of a Google review with a recognition where yes. you essentially become top choice award for that area. Yeah. Um, with that being said, how does it feel to be top choice for Canada for something like this? Given there's other, you know, don't get me wrong, there's other areas in Canada, there's other uh, restaurants or in your situation, there's other areas that are providing similar service, not necessarily chocolate, mm -hmm. but similar sort of, you know, outlets like that. To be honest, like it, first of all, I feel very proud. And I'm very lucky to have a great team because the credit definitely goes to them. They have been working so hard. Like everybody, you know, has put like through all the hard work and we didn't even know that we were contesting. We didn't even know that we were a part of top choice. Mm -hmm. So that was the biggest trophy for me that we were winning and we didn't even know because we were keeping our head down. We were doing the right things and we were not expecting anything. Amazing. And, and that's that's normally the, the way to win is like really just putting the hard work in day in, day out and expectations. I feel like sometimes expectations kind of sets the stage a little bit wrong when you're expecting something and just you're working your butt off for it and you're expecting it. But if you're not expecting it and you end up winning it, it's yeah. it's the best, best feeling ever. You did mention something about you starting a, a business back when you were 21. Tell yeah. me a little bit more about that struggle and how you built that business and you know why. So, first of all, you know, this, I would say when you are pushed at the edge, I was not from like a, you know, privileged family, I would say, even though I'm, I'm very lucky and I'm proud that I'm of coming from a family where my parents grinded a lot. We lived in a one BHK and a two BHK apartment and they gave us the values of being honest, you know, studies are important. But then, you know, I just 
felt like you know it the world wanted more from me mm-hmm. i always say that you know i i want people to ask more from me and this is a kind of a mentality which was inculcated with me at the very young age because i used to see you know there's a story and you know, i just wanted to share like which is a very uh, how would i say a very it's an emotional chip on my shoulders me and my father we were going through a expensive market in india at that time you know it was very tough to even pay the fees for my school so we were going through the store there was a store named as jack and jones in india it's very expensive mm-hmm. even though it's expensive over here in india it's super expensive so i was like around what like in 7th class like 7th grade and i was as i said i was very gullible before so i was walking with my father and i told uh, papa like I, i call him papa like uh, papa can we go inside so i remember he he told me day this place is not meant for us i said what do you mean it's not meant for us he said no no this place is too expensive yeah and i said that why are you saying that it's not meant for us like what is the why he said that i can't explain because he is a great man he didn't want it to you know let me know that way we stand it's he he tried to do everything but then i when i walked ahead of the store i told him that papa like that is going to be the place where i'm going to rule he said what do you mean and my first job as a manager in canada was at jack and jones oh wow so did that chip on your shoulder stayed there until so you actually me getting that is not like i always say that you know it's not luck or you know there is somebody on top who sees your efforts and when you are working with the vision it brings you there mm-hmm. so that you can you know face it you can, it brings you there to face it if you are winning or losing that's on you so over there also when i became the manager i had a great team who is still part of shockle february like they move with me because i'm not going without them anywhere and we won the best store award over there too they call the rockstar rockstar award So I would say that the reason of going business, I'm going to circle back that to the question you asked, is that I always want more. Even now, like I'm pushing myself, that uh, this life is doesn't have to be long. I don't believe in long life. Mm-hmm. I believe in a big life. Yeah. Even if I'm living till fifty, I want to build up that kind of a name. That there was a guy who came and tried. I don't want to know that he was the greatest winner. I don't care about winning. Trust me. trying trying to you know pursuing you know your passions and like trying to you know achieve something which is pushing you every day yeah that's going to be my winning trophy amazing man and it's all about like getting your hands dirty and just oh. making sure that you know what at the end of the day you have the scars to show for it 100% because it's one thing for people to just become or you you're born with it yeah it's not the same when you're working your butt off to to get something you feel even if you come close to it even if you don't get it Yeah. That feeling of you know what I've tried I've done everything that I could and I got there close but that's okay. Yeah. So how long have you had that business for when you were in India? Like I had it like for 3 to 4 years and in the beginning I it was a struggle because I couldn't understand the supply chain you know how it works when you ship the leather goods how it goes so it brought me that right knowledge you know like how to talk to the customers because at that time i was dealing with uh, the states new york mm-hmm. and that was a totally different market as compared to indian market it's totally different yeah but again you know i always realized now i realize that it was preparing me for something at that age i got that kind of a outlook now whomsoever i'm talking to in canada it seems that i know them and that's why you know even they say that we are so comfortable with you even though like I'll be honest to you like you don't need a lang- you sometimes people say that you have to be good speaker you need to speak amazing english my english is normal but they understand me better than a normal english guy yeah. well you speak in the right language which yeah. is at the end of the day is customer service it's yeah. uh, you know honesty putting your best foot forward for the client uh, one of the things that i felt confident and at ease with bringing you on the show is that like right away i felt that sense of like this guy is trying You know, it's not someone that I'm just going to bring on the show and he's just going to be telling me all about the, the, you know, the amazing things he's done. He's going to bring in this sort of like atmosphere of I've done everything that I could to, to be here. So with that being said, as far as Chocolate Fever goes, what are your plans for, for, you know, for the next five years, ten years for you guys? So, you know, like this question is like such a very, like I would say it's the most important question for me. whenever somebody asks me you know like what are you going to be doing in 5 years or 10 years first question like the first answer is going to be that i want to become a good human being first 
even though if I am with Shokla Fevri, if I am in Shokla Fevri, I want to be a better human first. Mm-hmm. And for that, my goal for five years is to have at least 400 co-workers with me. I am not talking in terms of how many business I should have. I want to be a provider for 400 co-workers. Amazing. That's a really big vision. That's my goal. You know, like people will say that, hey, you want a house, you want a car. You know what? 400 co-workers, that's going to be my social currency. Yeah. Who are going to stand with me wherever I want them to. And I like this. You brought this up a bunch of times while we're talking. Social currency. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about social currency. What does it mean today? Why is it important to you? Uh, why is it something that you think a lot of businesses should have? See, social currency is the most important currency because it has more impact. And what is it? The, so social currency is like when people are uh, vouching for you, when people are moving along with you mm-hmm. in terms of sharing the values and we, when people have faith. Yeah. You know, like I feel like social currency is directly proportional to faith. Absolutely. And I've actually, I'm glad that you, that you brought this up. I'm very glad that you brought it up. Because for me, um, I've had actually asked that question to my dad once because I'd mentioned social currency. And I said, what does it mean? And he said to me, imagine you walking down the street and you put your hand in your pocket and there's nothing there. Yeah. You have the people around you that will vouch for you and say, don't worry about it, you got it today. Yeah. Don't. And I said, yeah, but that's just like your friends. He goes, they're not just your friends. They're your people that you call upon when you need them. And they're going to call upon you when they need you. To me, that's what social currency is. And you spoke very, very highly of that. And that's why I wanted to bring it up is that, look, at, at the end of the day, you don't, we don't have to be all rich. Yes. But social currency is the richest kind of rich out there. Yep. And you speak very highly of like providing for 400 people. Tell me a little bit more about how you want the social currency to, to kind of take effect. So like right now, I have 24 people within my team mm-hmm. who are standing with me. Whenever I'm calling them, they're there. I'm sharing my meals with them, like we enjoy. 80% or 90%, I work seven days over there and they are always around me. So my goal is that I'm missing 376 people till five years now. And whatever I try to do is to, you know, build up a chain of people so that first of all, their success story becomes my success story. Because if 500 people become successful, automatically I will be successful. 100%. And... When I know that back in the mind where like there were days back home, like someday when we, me and my parents were struggling to, you know, put a meal on a table, imagine how like it's going to make me feel when I'm providing food for 500 people along with myself. Yeah. And that's going to make me feel like proud, first of all, as a person. And it's going to, you know, definitely make me feel that I'm doing the right thing. And you're doing it in a way where it's not necessarily like when people are like, oh, I'm providing for people. Um, We're not talking about like actually giving them yep. a meal what we're talking about here is showing them how to fish if you will yes. you know instead of fishing for the man you are you're showing them how to fish you're showing them how to go out and hunt and yep. in this situation would be working for you showing them what the business looks like how to go about building a business how to manage people and things like that with you know again going back to that plan that you have the 10-year vision for you tell me a little bit more why is that such a strong sort of case for you that you want to kind of provide for 400 people? See, I'm a big follower of, follower of Ratan Tata who is one of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. He's a, he's a person whom my father has worked for because he was in his organization, the Tata Group. And he always used to tell that, you know, consistency is not good. Like people say that, be consistent. But we don't even realize that even our heartbeat is not consistent. Mm-hmm. It is always zigzag. It clearly shows that we need to push ourselves. Yeah. And my goal of having those 500 co-workers within five years and within 10 years to have more is to, you know, basically, you know, build up a chain where we all thriving on it. We yeah. are surviving on it and we should be dependent on each other. When people say that you cannot be dependent, you are bound to be dependent on good people. Like if you're not dependent upon your people, then whom are you depending on? There is a thing to be said about us as social people, right? Like so like humans are a very social being. Yeah. We cannot be on this world alone. You know, you, you, you watch those shows, Lonely or whatever, at the end of the day, you'll go crazy. 100%. You know, and it's not just about just being social. So it's yeah. about also having that sense of like camaraderie, like the, you know, help me out, I help you out. You know, one of the things that you realize after a while, like it, you could be outcast in the group, right? And if you, you're outcasted, that's where you die. Yeah. So just having that sense of like, okay, well, what can we do to kind of grow together? That shows volume. 
Yeah. And I appreciate that. So with Chocolate February, you guys have built a name for yourself in Canada yeah. and you guys have taken on the business for the last little bit and then kind of brought it up. Tell me a little bit more about your team. Best thing is it's a blend of everything. There is exuberance, there is calmness, there is amazing customer service, you know, which you have witnessed today in the morning, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. We were there at your event and they care. They care about everything and which is the biggest you know, like biggest gift, which I have got, you know, like when always I talk to them, they care about the customers, they care about the products, they care about why are we doing it? Because if you and your team don't know that why are we doing it, then there is no point to do it. Yeah. And I think the why is always the biggest thing for any business is that when you get into the business, why do you get in the business in the first place? For some people, sure, it's the money, but the money is not everything because at the end of the day, like the money comes and goes. You can go and work a a government job. You can do whatever, you know, the money is going to be there. But it's that sense of why that really just kind of sets the business apart. And some people take it to heart and some people just don't really... Maybe they start with it, but then they kind of give up on it after a while. For you guys, the sense of why is that bringing happiness to the consumer, that your customer service that comes in, right? From the moment that they walk into the store to the moment they leave, you just want to put a smile on their face. Products or with the service or that extra over and above that you do or the sweetness as well that you kind of give with the customer. What makes you think, or maybe I should rephrase the question, what makes the perfect fit in a team? So the perfect fit is that they should have a learning attitude. Mm-hmm. The learning attitude is like a team which is going towards perfectness. Perfectness, You know, like I would say that uh, I believe in a saying that I don't want to touch the peak because I just want to keep climbing. Yeah. Same that my team does it too because they don't want to be perfect. Mm-hmm. They want to thrive to be perfect. And for that, they are open to learn from each other. Like give an example, we are doing Ramadan celebration. None of us is like Muslim, but the amount of eagerness they have to learn about the culture, to support the culture and to celebrate the culture is amazing. I am like a crazy guy, you know, when I'm thinking about an idea. My team supports that craziness. They don't even sleep. Like my manager, like he doesn't sleep. He says that, oh, I am thinking, you know, to bring this for Ramadan. I said, it's three o'clock. He said, I don't care. You have that sense of obsessiveness in a way, yeah. Obsessively with success. 100% because without without that craziness, you cannot like achieve great things. And people might say, okay, it's just a Ramadan celebration. For us, it's having an opportunity to get the blessings first of all in that auspicious time. And uh, Kanata and uh, Kanata market does, you know, like need that kind of celebration. And seeing everything which is happening around the world, This is not even one person which we are reciprocating. This is the reason my team is great. And I always say that they are always trying to do more, support different things, and they are open. And one thing you've mentioned as well about the, you know, I don't necessarily want to touch the peak. Tell me a little bit more about that. What does that mean today? So, like for me, this is, I'm a goal-oriented person. I'm not a dream-oriented person, first of all. Because goals and dreams are different. I feel like if I have done something, I can do better. Like as everybody, everybody who wants to become like, who wants to build their name, I always want to push myself. Yeah. Like give an example right now, we, I just became a partner for Lugano Cafe. And the reason behind that is like, I want to bring more from me, you know. I'm, I'm 32 years old and I still feel that I haven't achieved like a lot. See, you know, the, around the world, people, they are doing so much. They are doing so much. And for me, like, not touching the peak will keep me pushing all the time. Yeah. I want to work till I die. That's that's one of the dream I only have. Well, that's that's the dream of every entrepreneur out there. I yes. mean, at the end of the day, like you, you, there's a certain breed that's different than everybody else when it comes to entrepreneurs, right? It's that sense of like, no matter what, I'm always going to keep working. No matter what, I'm always going to be providing. I'm always going to be bringing something new to the table and keep enhancing myself. And when you say, I don't want to touch the peak, what I take out from it and maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm right you can correct me if I'm wrong is that if the peak is there and I hit it yep. I'm going to look for a different peak yes. so I'm never going to touch that peak yep. because I'm always going to be enhancing and, and kind of bringing the vision a little bit higher up and my goal is going to keep pushing up until the point of no return because it's always going to keep pushing up no matter what yep. so this way I'm always striving for becoming like the best of the best no matter what does that make sense? yes 100% amazing so when you guys are hiring for Chocolate February, what are you looking for in that team member? I'm a gut guy, you know, like I follow my gut. Mm -hmm. Energy in the presence of anybody who is coming to me, I 
I follow my gut first of all. I see the personality. Yeah. Because I don't believe in this thing that that person is talented and that person is less talented. For me, the values, you know, the person is should be respectful to everybody. Yeah. And you know, like a person who cares shows in everything. The way you sit, the way you speak, the way you look around, you will get to know if you that that person cares. Mm-hmm. Like for me, that attitude is very important. Talented and non-talented. Like I am the least talented in my team, to be honest. My team is like doing everything which I can't even imagine. You know, building up the basket, decorating the store. Sometimes when I go to the store, I literally say to that my to myself that do I really belong over here, bro? They are so talented. Yeah. So for me, like it has to be a person has to be full of values. And the values are honesty. The values are taking care of people because if you are not able to do those things, eventually. Whatever, you, it's not going to be good, working well with me. Yeah, so the basics more for you guys is like that, you know, the human aspect of it. Yes. Like just make sure that, you know, you're coming and you don't have a chip on your shoulder. You're ready to learn. Uh, you have that sense of belongings. You have that sense of like, I got to help people, caring, customer service oriented, that kind of stuff. Makes yes. sense. So one of the things we've talked about is growth for you guys. And then like, you know, obviously you want to have that, you know, the vision that you have of 400, 500 people working alongside of you and providing for them. How are you planning on doing that in the next little bit? See, right now, like, as uh, I have already been partnered with Logano Cafe, that's my goal to, you know, first of all, let the Canadian people know how good the Logano Cafe is. Like, it is pure Italian coffee. And uh, again, the values of the company is very strong. I don't want to stress on that much, but the goal is, like, right now, to obviously expand in terms of chocolate February. Mm-hmm. And the company is very supportive and they have seen our vision and they want us to, you know, like do more. They are, the best thing is they expect us to do more, which is a good thing. Yeah. They want us to, you know, keep trying, supporting the different communities. And that's the example. It's Ramadan celebration first time in 40 years, right? Absolutely. And then that's something that we're, uh, we're hoping that we can plan something together here in the next little bit. I don't think the show is going to come out before, but hopefully it's at some point going to yes. be coming midway through uh, Ramadan for sure. Just touching base on the fact that, again, Chocolate February is a franchise. How do you feel about a business owner? How do you feel about uh, you know, having that franchise opportunity? Is it helping you? Is it hindering you? Because I know sometimes you know, being a franchise owner, it comes with pluses and minuses. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about that and how you feel. See, you know, like, because of Chocolat February, to be honest, I'm sitting here. That's plain and simple. I'm, like, grateful for them, you know, the way they have supported from the beginning and till even now, like, they allow us to do, use our talents and uh, they have very strong values because it is a Quebec-based company. The people are amazing in the head office. When I went there, I was like mesmerized that what kind of an environment it was beautiful you know like people were enjoying Mm -hmm. they were putting their inputs and they were even listening to us which is very important i mean what's not good to enjoy have you seen charlie and chocolate factory like it's it's, it's amazing uh, just being in a chocolate factory yeah and uh, the best thing is when i gave them a suggestion they heard me and i'm an outsider even in terms of like talk about canada and even in terms of business i'm a new business guy right But they respected me so much and that's, I would say, is a great trait of any brand. And that's why, you know, their quality, their supply chain and everything is so good and now we are going to expand. Right now we want to start, take baby, baby steps and the company is again, you know, supporting us for that. And, you know, the sky is the limit. So what are some of the things that as a business owner, what are some of the things that you would suggest for people that are trying to start their business out there? what they should do, how they should look at it, how do they go about planning, all of that stuff. I would definitely tell everybody that if I can do, anybody can do it. This is one thing which I want to be telling them that have faith in yourself. It doesn't matter where you start in your life, where are you going towards and where you end is in your hands. This is one thing. The second thing which is more practical is, like I had a roadmap. I was applying the jobs because I was, you know, connecting the dots. Like, I went into sales. I learned how to sell. Yeah. I saw the market, the demographics and the psychographics because you have to start from the bottom. Some people just see, think that, okay, we have money, we are going to invest and become an investor. There is a difference between an investor and, how would I say, an industrialist and an entrepreneur. You have to do things with a purpose, not just because you have the money, you will invest. Don't do that. Yeah. For the long run, you need to start from the bottom 
understand why and what are you good in like i am good in sales trust me and i enjoy it because so they should make a road map they should get into the market make their hands dirty make their clothes dirty yeah they should work 7 days even if you have fever don't worry the fever will go next day take a pill get on the floor make sure those extra steps are counted and they are meant to be counted yeah because those things will build you and you know what just keep working hard i like how you said like uh, put a road map out there it's yeah. it's uh, to me it's the same as like okay if i'm going to go from here to toronto or if i'm going to go from here to montreal i've never been right if i've never been well what's the easiest way to do it is to either find somebody that's been or find the map yes and putting a road map in a business is is a big thing is like putting a business plan in place here's what i want to do even if you don't have a business plan but at least write it down yep put a so, some sort of a, a road map for yourself here's the business that i want to create here's how i'm going to create it here's how the steps that i'm going to do and if it's wrong it doesn't matter you can correct it as you go same thing when you go to, from here to montreal if it's wrong yeah if you don't have a map you can correct it but if you don't have a way to go on it's just it's very hard for you to kind of figure out kind of where you're going to head if you don't have an antenna if you will to to get there kind of thing and then from a business standpoint as far as growth for you guys what are some of the things that you feel like it helped you in the business as far as readings and learnings and all of that stuff that you do extra aside see to be honest like i used to be a early sleeper before but now when i go home after closing my store because i'm always closing first of all this is one thing which i want to let everybody know if you are running a business be in the business and choose the most toughest time and be there Yeah. So I will be there in every closing. And the toughest time for you guys is it's mostly when people are in the evening, evening. exactly, yeah. Makes and then sense. when I go home, I like uh, I eat once a day now, so I have to eat obviously because uh, that's the, that's one thing which is very important to eat. And then I always study something when I'm all alone. This is one time which I spend on myself because there is a lot to learn. Yeah. When people say that, "Oh, I know everything and I have learned everything." No. No. That's Don't absolutely do that. wrong. Don't do that. Study. There are so many podcasts right now. Like things were so different. Now it's so different. Everything is so like accessible. You know exactly. Like, you can learn almost everything if you wanted to put your mind to it, and then you know get there and say like, okay, I want to. I want to learn the piano. Okay, here's a few things that you can follow to learn the piano. One thing I liked about what you said is be in the business. Tell me a little bit more about that. Why is it matter for people to be in their business? See, being in the business will definitely let you know first of all that how you're doing. Yeah. Because you will know from inside. Being in the fight, you can make those decisions where like, you know, you will see that, you know, like actually speaking, people start respecting you more. Exactly. When as a business owner, you are coming once a week your team doesn't even know like when you're working and you're just coming there saying hi that doesn't work around you so have to be there in a way you're like you're not really feeling what's going on with the business yes. you're not understanding if there's good bad and ugly like if they're describing something for you you don't relate to it because mm-hmm. you're not de- really there the other thing too and i've heard this saying before i'm not sure who said it but it's it's either you're working in the business or you work on the business yeah. and if you're not working in the business don't let the business work you mm-hmm. kind of thing don't let the business run you you run it yes. versus it running you one of the things that i've also noticed really quick when i was at the store is that sense of care you know that sense of belongings like everyone in the store i felt like they they all care about the store they yeah. care about the customer walking in how do you guys instill that how do you put that into the team you know like uh, it's a chain reaction and it starts from the bottom to the top and i always say that you know there are days where someone is having a bad day it's yeah. going to happen exactly but that's the you know time where leaders and i say that leaders are not only the managers everybody even a guy who's working 4 hours in a week is also can be a leader mm-hmm. if the mentality is such and when they see that you know out of two people one is caring they follow that you know because it's contagious and it's not that tough to care it's no and that that's tough. that's one of the things that i've realized as well too and i'm again i'm not really sure i i have a lot of those quotes that i'm not really sure who said it but i know someone said it out there and it's really it kind of sticks people only care when they see that you care yes so clients for example like when you know when they see that you really care about them they start caring about you and they start bringing you other clients and they start referring businesses to you and and such 
And the same goes for you guys. Like I walked in the store, you know, someone was helping me out, but I saw this lady that just walked in with her child and like your employee held the door for her, got her in. And then he was just talking to the child as if the child is actually a customer. And then that to me was like, oh my God, like they're treating the child as if this child is the one paying the bill. That showed the lady that you guys cared. Yes. And then she just the smile on her face was just unreal. And I mean, don't get me wrong, like I would be with a smile like this if I was in a chocolate store again, but still just that the showing that you care just kind of really pushes everybody to elevate their game as well. Yeah. With that being said, tell me a little bit more about the Lugano Coffee. The, you know, you just started the new sort of venture. What yeah. is that all about? So the Lugano ca- uh, Coffee is, as I said, it's Italian based and uh, we are planning to, you know, get into like more into the Canadian market. Mm-hmm. We have our distribution right now and uh, the supply chain is getting set up. Yeah. And our goal is to, you know, just as I say, when the product is good, you just need to, you know, bring it to the customer. It automatically sells. So I'm lucky, you know, I won't be doing a lot of salesmanship in that because the product is going to help me in that. Now, is that something that you're going to have within Chocolate Fivery or is that something sort of separate? Or? So it's going to be a separate entity, but definitely, you know, the coffee, we do also sell coffee. Like mm-hmm. uh, we do provide coffee at Chocolate Fivery and we do use Lovano beans because that's the best way, you know, for us to, you know, know more about it because I have to become a lover of a brand before selling it. 100%. And uh, this is a good way. And as I said, we are, the goal is to, you know, get into the Canadian market and, you know, you know just... Uh, Maybe in future we will have a bricks and mortar store and then we will have a cafe and things will go around. So is it going to be more of a, a supply chain kind of business for you at the beginning or is it more of a, like you said, obviously at some point you're going to have a yep. brick and mortar, but what is it going to look like at the beginning? As of now, it's going to be a supply chain business where we'll be supplying the you know coffee and we do have amazing machines too at Lovano. Mm-hmm. You can see it on the Lovano cafe web- website. And uh, yeah, as as the products, you know, as we have more brand advocates, as the, you know, Canadian market feels the need of it, I, as I said, you know, fulfilling the need, we will definitely, you know, go into the bricks and mortar store. Fantastic, man. It, it sit down and talk for hours and I feel yeah. like it's, uh, it never ends. Even like I, I could leave right now and I'm like, oh man, I just, I got to talk to them about this. I'll call you back. Sure. So I feel like this is always going to be something that you and I will keep doing, just yep. keep talking about business and growth and all of that. And I like how your mind thinks of growth and, and like the way that you just kind of put yourself together as a business owner. With that being said, I really appreciate you, you being on the show and uh, looking forward to much more doing business with you guys and then bringing more uh, events to your place and then hope seeing you grow as, as you are one of those deserving businesses to, uh, to get out there and grow as a business owner as an entrepreneur, as a struggling uh, entrepreneur, as we all are, right? Yes. At the end of the day, like if, if we're not struggling, the struggle is always real as an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Even when we're at the top, if we're not struggling, we're not building a business. I don't feel like it. You know, we have to. So thank you so much for being on the show today. Really look forward to uh, to having, you know, come back to the store again and looking forward to invite the folks out there to uh, visit Chocolate Fivery in Canada. It's one of my favorite stores and if you haven't visited especially right after what just happened there with you know valentine's day you missed it this is a chance for you to make up i'll give you an example my kids said if you're mad at us or if i'm mad at them i just gotta bring them to the store and they're gonna feel like amazing after so it definitely speaks for itself blocks all the the pain receptors out there and you're definitely enjoying yourself for for the five ten minutes that you're enjoying the product yeah uh with that being said thank you so much again day and uh, look forward to uh, more of this and if you guys if you like the show And if you want to see more entrepreneurs and business owners around Ottawa, please hit us up, send me a DM or what have you, and hit the like button so we can get more and more of these episodes. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up so we can uh, show you more of the businesses around the city and bring more joy to you here. Thanks again.